Alright, what's going on guys? So you know how to sync your grid to UDKs and you also know how to kind of navigate around Maya and use some of its controls and options. Uh, for this video I wanted to show you how to uh, use the UV texture editor and also how to apply uh, materials or textures to your shapes that you've made. As you can see, like these, they're kind of a uh, like a wood for a clothesline that I'm making now. I don't have anything on this. This is still just the standard Lambert one that uh, Maya defaults with. Um, and if you remember, in my first video, I believe it was, um, I was talking about this black and white checkered ball up here. It says textured on it. If you uncheck that, now you can see my textures are gone. And I, I didn't have anything textured on the uh, example on that video, but now that I do, I just wanted to show you what that black and white textured ball does. And in case you you ever ran into it where you put something on a uh, on a mesh and you're just you can't figure out why it's not showing up, that is probably the reason it's not showing up. Is that right there? I've done it and uh, now every time I start up uh, and make my first shape I always click the textured thing it's just a habit now um, so okay to uh, apply materials to these things first off if you hold right click on any of your objects it doesn't matter uh, I'm not actually going to pick anything here but if you go down to the second to last option it says assign existing material and you'll probably see like Lambert 1, um, Particle Cloud 1, uh, I think those are, are the two default ones, but there could be some other ones. Um, we're not going to pick any of that, but we will come back to that in a second. I just wanted to kind of show you that uh, first off. So I'm going to go into object mode so all those lines aren't there. So the first thing you do is uh, go to Window rendering editors and hypershade this is going to bring up all the uh, different uh, things of course I've made some of these um, but I think Lambert 1 and particle system and the shader glow are default already there uh, there could be could be another one but I can't remember but you'll have all these different options here and there's a, there's just a ton of you know like 2D textures and 3D and light maps and environments and uh, for right now though I'm just going to select uh, I'm gonna go back and click on this little Maya thing right here not the Maya with the plus sign but the Maya with the arrow next to it that I guess has all these in it um, just so we're looking at the same thing and what I usually stick with is either Blinn, Lambert, or either one of the Fongs. Uh, the Blinn is really reflective. The Fong E is pretty reflective. Uh, regular Fong is a little shiny, maybe like uh, like mm, shiny uh, aluminum, maybe. Um, and then Lambert is really dry, which is what I used on my wood right here that way it has you know it doesn't reflect it doesn't have any shine to it it's just it's just there and catches not uh, light really nice uh, but for this I'm actually uh, I'm gonna pick blend right here I'm just gonna click that once and now it shows up over here I'm gonna double click so now it pops up with this and you have color and transparency and all these different options here. But the first thing I want to do is rename this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make it sample for video. Now you can name this whatever you want. Uh, I will show you how to actually assign a material to this. Just uh, so whatever. Uh, uh, maybe I'll do aluminum. Uh, sample aluminum <clears throat> okay so now that we have that named the first thing you're going to come to is color that's going to be right in the middle probably 
click on this checkered box right next to it then you see all these different things right here but what we're going to do is actually go to file and it'll pop up with this window behind you I'm also going to type in uh, sample aluminum again we're going to come down here to this folder and go ahead and click on it so now uh, you can see like all the different things that I've got in my folder uh, I keep my folder on my desktop uh, just so if I ever need to uh, quickly access it because sometimes if you if you uh, make something say in GIMP or if you download something uh, texture on on the internet or something and you save it uh, sometimes if if you don't actually open the file uh, Maya has a hard time uh, actually showing the file in the system I'm not sure why it still applies it it just uh, on these on these balls right here it it'll show up like this wood texture did as you can see it's still on my thing right here but if you wanted to you know add some reflection to it and you really wanted to see what you were doing this would not help you at all so just something to put in the back of your head so I'm gonna pick aluminum full texture and I'll put the link to this picture uh, right under the video too so if you don't have it go ahead and pause this and just click on the link and uh, go ahead and just download it and put it in a folder, a folder where you're going to be able to find it and then start the video again so I'm going to double click on this aluminum full and as you can see it did the same thing to me as the wood texture did um, sure why it does that but okay so now we have sample aluminum right here and I'm gonna click on that I'm actually just gonna do this again real quick and see why it's not popping up I'm not sure why it's doing that kinda of getting on my nerves okay so since that won't work I'm actually gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go I guess to my rope texture I haven't really messed with yet but this is going to be for the clothesline I'll just show you what some of this stuff does like transparency this will make it go invisible or not that's all that does I wish I could make this a lot bigger so you could see it but it doesn't really make the picture any bigger ambient color that just makes it like really crazy like just white uh, diffuse and I mean all this stuff like there's a lot of different stuff you can do and I don't want to take anybody's time going through all this I mean we all have it so you can sit there and just play with them and then if you don't like it just put it back to what you started at um, but that's how you you know edit that stuff so all right so we have our sample aluminum I'm just gonna go ahead and close that don't worry about hitting save or OK or anything, you can just close it. So I'm going to make sure I'm in object mode, and I'm going to pick this pick this uh, piece of wood right here. Now I already have the wood, um, the wood put on there, but I'm going to now hold right click, come down here to assign existing material, and just let go on sample aluminum. Now you can see it's actually aluminum looking. Uh, kinda. It's kinda flat, but and it's not shiny. Remember I did pick Lambert for that. For the wood. Um, you know what, let's uh since I have that on there, I'm just gonna run through real quick and uh go to hypershade. And I'm gonna click on sample aluminum. Now that we have it in the world um, I'm going to show you how to edit or what all this stuff looks like. So, uh, like I said, the transparency, you see it kind of disappear and then it's gone. Now, what I really want to show is reflectivity right here and reflected color. So, I'm going to make it kind of white, like reflected white, and pull reflectivity all the way up. So you see it's kind of got a shine to it, not really what you're looking for. Um, 
but it does have a little bit of a shine to it. But again, just uh, just kind of play with this kind of stuff. See what see what makes it look good. I'm just using aluminum to you know, that that brightens it up a lot. I'm just using aluminum as as an example. You don't have to use that. Um, <clears throat> so okay, let's say that uh, let me actually put the wood back on. Maybe it'll be. No, it came back the same way it was. Um, so okay, let's say you put a material on your object and it comes out sideways. Let's say the wood grain was actually like this instead of straight up to where it looks more natural. Um, so what you want to do is anything that um, is messed up as far as your material goes. If it's sideways, if it's crooked, if it's just not placed right, or you want to kind of move some of these cracks over to another spot, all you have to do is make sure in your object mode, click on the, the mesh that you want, and come up here to edit UVs. Now, I am in polygons right now. If you're in animations, it's not going to be there. I am in polygons. So edit UVs right up here. UV texture editor. And now it'll pop up with this. Um, so first off, you'll see this gray square with a like a blue square coming out of it down like a like half of a 3D square I guess that used to draw on paper in school. Uh, by default it, it probably won't even be checked. So make sure you check this so you can see and all this is is the top of my cylinder, the body of it which is all this and then the bottom cylinder. That's all this is. Uh, you might have another shape and it might look a little different but for the cylinder this is what it looks like top, middle, and bottom. Okay so you have this checked so make sure it's all blue and also you'll see right here in the middle it says move UV shell tool. You want to click that and then go ahead and click uh, what I'm going to do is actually click all of mine, so I'm going to hold shift. Just go ahead and click all three of my uh, top, middle, and bottom. That way when I move it, the whole thing is together. Uh, you don't always have to do this. It's just what I'm doing to kind of show you how it can um, be manipulated here. Let me move this over. That way you can see it kind of moving around. Now you can see the kind of the wood grain moving. So if there was a good spot like this, if you wanted to use just that really big crack right there, you know you could put it right there and, and be done. Now, when when I started, my shapes were down here, uh, and they were also like this. Now you know why I brought up the sideways thing, because this is how it looked initially. So it looks like tiger stripes or something. It does not look like wood. So all I did was made sure this was clicked. Go ahead and click this. And select whichever pieces you want to move, which I'm going to do rotate. I'm going to get this back looking the way it was supposed to. good enough. Hit W and put it right back up here. And the reason it's up here is because I have this post using this part of the texture. I have one other pole using like this part, another pole using this part, and another pole using this part. So that way none of them are using the same part of the texture as another one. So they, they don't all look the same. They're not uh, symmetric, you know, they, they all look like individual poles to me. So that's how you use that. So once you figure out, you know, how how you want to have your uh, texture placed on your on your shape, you can just go ahead and close it. And there you go. Looks good to me. So alright guys, thanks for watching and I hope this helped. 
I'll see you on the next one.